Do you remember this graph? A couple of weeks ago, we made a video about the truth of what happened to Joss in Germany, which was kind of an emotional and sad story. And a lot of people wanted to hear my story of what happened to me here in Mexico, because something similar happened to me. This is the story. So this graph says, <laughs> I almost hit your yeah. face. This graph says that when you go to a new country, at first you're super excited. The longer you stay in that country, that initial excitement disappears. It goes down. You, you start to get sick of it. <laughs> yeah. It goes down, yeah. You have the culture shock. You're not excited anymore because it's nothing new. You're like, what am I doing here? You feel alone. Then, once you reach the bottom, you're adjusting and slowly, you get to the adaption phase. Yes. We just... Um, Accept your faith. <laughs> it's pretty straightforward. And that's exactly what happened to me in Germany. If you haven't watched that video, we'll put it in the description and at the end of this video. Yes, so stick around. This video will probably not be as emotional as Joss's video. Wait! <laughs> because I'm not crying that easily. He's a stone. Oh, He's a German stereotype. He doesn't share his feelings that easily. Yeah, I'm very close. <laughs> <laughs> so, the story begins in the beginning of 2020. The year started with me being in Mexico. And I was there for a couple of months. Now I need the, <laughs> the paper back. My happiness was very high. Then in March, we wanted to go to California. And something very special should have happened in California because I wanted to propose to Joss. <laughs> And I had no idea. Now a few weeks before we went to LA, or a few days even, we heard the first news about the coronavirus. And we thought about, should we still go to California or should we cancel the whole trip? Okay. But it was not a pandemic yet at that point. So we decided, let's go to California. I remember perfectly that there were 20 cases in entire California. Yeah. And people were already kind of freaking out about 20 cases. Now looking back, it's like, that was not that That's much. Very <laughs> yeah. So we decided to go. We arrived to California. And two or three days later, it was declared a pandemic. Mm -hmm. We went to the supermarket. Almost all the water was gone. Toilet paper was gone. Mm -hmm. And obviously we started to freak out a little bit because we thought, oh man, what are we doing in California now? What if they close the borders and we're not allowed to exit the country anymore? Yes. <laughs> so long story short, we decided to go back to Mexico before anything crazy happens. We canceled everything in California. I had to cancel my idea of the proposal, mm. sadly. And on top of that, we had to cancel the trip from California back to Germany because that was the original plan. That's true, yeah. I theoretically could have flown to Germany already, but they didn't let Joss in because Germany said, hey, no unmarried partners are allowed to enter the country. Yeah. I didn't want to leave her alone, so I decided to stay here. That was very sweet from you. Okay, so that's the context, so you can understand what happened next, because the story gets a little crazy. So we came back to Mexico, and the graph kept going where I left off, mm -hmm. which was somewhere around here. Yes. <laughs> Unfortunately, with the pandemic, we were not able to do a lot of things, mm -hmm. and we were very cautious, so we decided to stay mostly in the house with, the with Joss's friends. parents, mm -hmm. especially right after we came back from California. We were scared that we got the virus already, yes. and we stayed in her room for the first one week, like basically yeah, the like whole time. Every hour of the day, basically. So we were very cautious. The whole time we were in Mexico, we didn't see any friends, we didn't go any restaurants, we didn't do anything. Yeah, we didn't do much. Uh, we were just trying to figure out what content to make from home. On the bright side, I was finally able to sleep in Joss's room. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> My God. Because they were like, now you're just stuck in your rooms, and you can sleep together. Yes, they took pity on us. <laughs> yeah. So we didn't do anything. I had no inspirations for videos because what are you going to do if you're in the house 24 seven? <laughs> so my happiness slowly went down mm -hmm. and lower and lower and lower. And it also makes sense with the months that you were there. Yeah, it's a pretty good graph. Yeah. After being in the house for weeks, we finally went on our first trip mm -hmm. and it was to a place close to San Luis Potosí, to Cerro de San Pedro. We made a video of the day and it's called I want to leave Mexico. We got some hate for that title. <laughs> but it was the truth. Like It wasn't about Mexico. It was about this. It was about this. Do you know that feeling when you're annoyed at everything? That's what happened to me. I woke up, I went into the bathroom, the door was squeaking and I was annoyed. <laughs> then I went into the shower, not much water was coming out because it was stuck with calc. 
and I was annoyed. <laughs> and then I went downstairs to have breakfast. I had to speak Spanish and I was annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> so he didn't speak to anyone anymore. <laughs> yeah, you were super grumpy. I don't know. I was annoyed at the whole situation. You just went to in Germany. I wanted to be in Germany. But at the same time, I even during that time, I even told you just buy a ticket and go to Germany. I remember telling you just go to Germany, dude. Yeah, but and you were like, at that no, time, I don't want to go. And it's annoying that you're asking. <laughs> it's like, don't annoy me by asking me. <laughs> no. It's like but, a kid throwing a tantrum. <laughs> I was just waiting for Germany to lift the rules yes. so you can come with me. But yeah, the, the language was very annoying. You even said it in the video. I have to admit, in the last couple of weeks, I was so sick of speaking Spanish. I just need a break from having to concentrate every single time when someone talks to me. I wish at that point I would have spoken Spanish perfectly without thinking about it because that would have made things way more easy. Easier. easier. <laughs> no English too. Oh my God. The same thing happened to me in German too. Every time I go, I'm like, why is my German not better? Why can I not speak it better, dude? And that takes us to the sponsor of this video. You know what could have helped me a lot back then? There's a language app called Clio that is focused on helping you learn to speak. And it's unlike any other app that I've tried before because it works with interactive videos. And when you're using it, it feels like you're actually talking to a person, although you're not. Oh. Tengo una hija. <gasps> I'm not kidding. The first time when I opened this app and a woman started talking to me for maybe like a millisecond, I thought. Hola. Come on in. <laughs> Am I on Skype with someone? This way of learning is very different, but it totally makes sense because from the first lesson on, you're like forced to speak. And the app works with voice recognition technology. So if there's room for improvement, they give you feedback. I really like the structure of the lessons because after a person introduced the topic, you move on to vocabulary. Then there's a person checking if you actually remember the vocabulary. And then there's a deep dive into the grammar. At the moment, the languages they offer are Spanish, German, Italian, and some Ukrainian. The main language of the app is English. So that's the language they use to explain things. So if you're a native speaker or if you already know English, you're good to go. Now, if you don't know English, it could be a little bit more complicated. But if you know at least some English and you want to learn, let's say, German, you can use this app not only to learn German, but also English at the same time. Nervous. Soon more language pairs will be added and we were told the next one will be English for Spanish Spanish speakers. Oh, you guys are gonna love it. If you click the link in the description, you can download the app and try the first few lessons for free. But if you want to unlock all the lessons they have, you can get Clio Pro and you can pay for a week, a month or six months. And with this code, you get a 35% discount for the first three months. Right now it is available for iOS and soon they will release the Android version. If you're currently an Android lover, then you have to wait a little bit. Yannick wants to change to Android actually. I know. Clio, hurry up because Yannick <laughs> needs the app. Yeah. <laughs> so give it a try. We are really impressed with this app and it's mm -hmm. crazy the amount of work they put into this app. It seems to be really like a project that came from the heart. And yeah, we're here supporting and hopefully you guys support too. And now back to your culture shock. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So after being here in the house for a couple of months, Germany finally opened the borders again for Joss. Yes. <laughs> Literally for Joss. And we had to bring photos of our relationship and a bunch of like An invitation messages letter. that we wrote to each other yeah. to prove that we were a couple. Yeah, that was pretty crazy. Mm. We were finally able to book a flight to Germany and that happened before I could even reach Adjustment. the adjustment or the adaption phase. Yes. So I was still here somewhere in the low, but at that point we were like, just yeah. to Germany. Yes. <laughs> so theoretically, he should have gotten happy. Yeah, and I was happy because I finally saw my family again. I saw my nephew again. Mm -hmm. And then the YouTube get on started. <laughs> YouTube get on I, doesn't make any sense. I call dude. it YouTube get it. Okay, Arma, okay. Armageddon. We posted a video that we worked very hard on and it didn't get any views. Literally 10 views. Nobody was able to see it. Our channel was invisible. We had no idea why we didn't know what happened and the YouTube support took a very long time to figure it out. They continue saying there was no issue with our channel. We basically thought that we lost it. Yeah. We thought, okay, that our dream and all these things that we've been working on are gone until 
We continue to bother YouTube to the point that they sent a special team to check our case. After more than a month, they were finally able to fix the problem and we were able to post again and that's what we did. Like we posted the next couple of months and you guys could see our videos again mm -hmm. and slowly but surely we were getting happier again. But that month was awful. Yeah, that month sucked. Completely low happiness. <laughs> <laughs> then before the year ended, we went back to Mexico because we wanted to launch our brand of shampoo bars. Natoy! Hey! <laughs> <laughs> to launch your brand, we wanted to announce it in a video, which had footage from over a year. And it took me an entire month to work on that video. And it was an awesome video. I love that video. I could watch it a thousand times. Yeah, it's a great video, but it was incredibly stressful because oh. I was so on a time pressure, I was like, I have to finish the video now. Mm -hmm. It was already mid-December and we wanted to launch the product so that you could get the products before Christmas or during Christmas. Yeah, he was just the whole day home working on the computer. Yeah, I was stuck in my room again in Mexico. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I achieved it. We launched it mid-December and the 15th. we were very happy because you guys were ordering the products. And you're still ordering the products. You still love them. But yeah. that's not the point. <laughs> <laughs> that's not the point. In the beginning of 2021, the initial excitement of the launch went away mm -hmm. and I was going back to editing normal videos. And I was there and I didn't feel like editing anything. I didn't feel like recording anything. I didn't want to be in front of a computer. And then I realized what tall the previous video took on me. Yes, it was way too much work. Yeah, and it's not only that video, but also all the other videos before because you know I'm a perfectionist like our initial plan was to always post every Sunday every single Sunday and that's what we did for the first two three years, years, three years three years maybe but I was always under pressure and with my perfectionism I was still editing Saturday night and or sometime Sunday morning. a Sunday morning I remember one time it was Christmas the 24th mm -hmm. and I was editing the video that we wanted to post on the 24th until 6 a.m. on the Christmas day Thinking back, I'm like, this is so stupid. That video got like 3,000 views and I spent the entire Christmas super tired because I edited the whole video. Yeah. <laughs> so after all of those years of editing content every single week and then that launch video, I guess I had burnout. Yeah, you were not having a good time. Oh, it makes me so sad. I am way more emotional than you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I remember those times like Right after the launch of Natal, I was still very excited because I had been very busy the previous year. So I was finally able to focus on videos, but you didn't want to anymore. Yeah. It totally made sense what you said. We were missing out on so much of life, even though in the videos were cool, we were traveling and stuff, but we didn't have a free day. Yeah. We always wanted to work from Monday to Friday and weekends free. Yeah. And it just didn't work out ever. Every time we came to Mexico, <laughs> I'm gonna cry. Oh my God. Okay, every time we came to Mexico, uh, my parents would be like, why are you working so much? Yeah, weekends? they were worried about us. They were proud of us and excited about our videos. But when they had a free weekend and they wanted to like have lunch with us and so, <laughs> we never had time. No. We were always home. And I felt like I was missing out also on my family Yeah. because of that. And then, wait, I don't, this is not my video to cry on. This is your <laughs> video to cry on. But I... I have to say, when, when you had that time and you didn't want to even touch a camera. You were like, I've never seen him like this. He didn't even want to touch a camera or be in front of the computer at all. You were like, I don't give an F about anything anymore. I just want to live outside of the camera. And you looked sad. I felt like I was losing you a little bit. Wait! <laughs> I always saw you so passionate about things and in that moment I, I, it was just gone. Yeah. For me, in my mind, that specific month was the worst. Worst, worst, worst. Yeah, so we decided to slow down and post less videos, which meant our views were going down. But in that moment, our mental health was more important. Yes. During that time, uh, we really thought about quitting YouTube because we were just feeling bad. Before doing it, we wanted to talk to somebody or connect with someone that can understand where we're coming from. So Holly was following us on Instagram. We didn't know each other, but you guys liked her and she seemed like a very nice person. So we contacted her and we got on a video call with her and Ben. Yes. We ended up talking for four hours. 
without knowing each other. We connected instantly. Uh, it was great. Yes. It's like finally someone that is on the same page. Yeah, and it's nice and authentic, and it just felt like ah oh, good. So after that call. Even though she didn't tell us like what to do or anything like that, we didn't feel alone anymore. And we decided to continue doing YouTube and to lower our expectations for ourselves. Yes. And also what happened was that we planned another trip to California. Mm -hmm. And with that, <laughs> my plan of the proposal was back on. Uh, <laughs> and everything was brighter again. <laughs> yeah. So I was planning the proposal for months. So I used my time wisely. Mm. And then in summer of 2021 we went to california and we happened to have one of our favorite moments ever yes and on that trip we made two of our favorite videos of all time and i could tell that you were super motivated to record because also something was happening again like life was happening yes outside of a house so i had stories to tell mm. you know we were moving forward after california we went to spain and portugal to see if we would like to live in any of those countries yes so it also felt like okay finally our life is like getting to the next point to the <laughs> next level yeah yes so you all always need something that you're looking forward to you need to have a goal Without a goal, you just lost and you just stuck in the same place, which I felt during the pandemic here in mm -hmm. Mexico. But at that time in California and then in Spain and Portugal, I was like, oh yeah, nice. Yes, it and was awesome. Motivation is back. Plus, we started posting a lot of videos on our second channel, the vlogging channel. Yes. Where we were not able to compare us to ourselves. <laughs> so if that makes any sense. Yeah, it was like a new channel without expectations. Whenever you open the YouTube analytics, it shows your most recent video compared to the previous 10 videos. And it's just not great to look at it. I mean, when it's, when you have a video that is number one out of 10, it feels nice, but also fine. Okay. When your video is in the like seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, feels awful. Like the lows are very low and the highs are not that high. Yeah, it's always like that. You focus more on the negative than on the positive. And we've even talked to some creators that tell us like, I always put my hand on top of yeah. that thing because I don't want to see it. It's just not healthy. <laughs> it's not healthy, no. So that was great about the second channel. We had 10,000 subscribers, so we were not expecting a lot of views. And we were just creating content for fun because we liked doing it. That felt so freeing. It was so much fun to vlog in Riviera Maya and then with my parents. So if you guys saw less of Joss and Yannick in this channel, Maybe all of the videos that you wanted to see are on the vlogging channel. But yeah. that was for our mental health. Yeah, and since the proposal, we've been working on the wedding, mostly just in this case. It's um, been so much fun. Like you said, something to look forward to. Yeah, we have been working on our brand, Natoy, mm -hmm. and we have been posting videos, in case you didn't notice. Yes. <laughs> and last year in December, the plan was to post one video every single day. Now you might think, why would you do that <laughs> after you were just burned out? from editing. Yes, yes, that's true. <laughs> but in 2022, we didn't post that many videos. So I felt like I could take on the challenge mm -hmm. and I'm, I was ready for it. We were not fully successful. We did not post every single day, but a lot of videos. Mm -hmm. And I think that taught me to be less perfectionist because I really had like one or two days to edit each video. I did not fully enjoy the trip <laughs> <laughs> because we were always recording or editing, but I was so proud of you. I was so proud of you. Thank you. I wanted to tell you. <laughs> Thank you. Also the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what? Also the, the idea of posting every day was your idea. And yeah. I was shocked. But it just made me feel proud of you. And Not I was because, motivated in London. Yes. And before already, you were looking forward mm -hmm. to it. And he has become less perfectionist. Let's hope it sticks. Yeah. And looking back at my culture shock phase, and the burnout and all that stuff. That year and a half. <laughs> Not everything was negative. While we were here in Mexico for a very long time during the pandemic, my Spanish actually improved massively. Your Spanish is so good right now. And I think now I can talk to people way better and I can understand people way better. You can talk to anyone. Except you're with your friends. <laughs> and they all talk at the same time. You don't time. know, we haven't been with them for a long time together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Probably never. Great. <laughs> never gonna happen. Also, if we wouldn't have stayed here in Mexico for that long during the pandemic, we wouldn't have been able to launch our brand. Mm -hmm. And lastly, now we know that our mental health is more important 
than views in the end of the day that we every once in a while should take a step back mm -hmm. and just focus on ourselves yes and that has pushed us to new projects and hopefully this year we'll be able to share them with you yeah it's gonna be exciting it's gonna be so exciting we have something to look forward to so that's the moral of the story have a goal if you don't have a goal create one take small steps and pay attention to the positive things not only the negative i gotta say i wanted to say this earlier but sorry i just remember right now in the time of all the bad stuff we felt a little guilty because i remember in the video we even said there's so many people that are having it worse there's a pandemic going on yeah. and it was like we were not allowed to feel this bad if we're together we're healthy the only thing is that you're in mexico that's it now you never know what's happening inside of a person you never know what's happening in their brain a lot of people also said I was very ungrateful in the video that I made about my German culture shock because I was in a first world country and that's supposed to make me happy. Yeah. But you don't know. Yeah, there's people that are super successful and end up... Depressed. Just respect everybody's journey. That was a long video. Let's see how long I take to edit this. <laughs> I can edit it. If, if you're gonna get burned out, <laughs> no. don't worry. Okay. No. If you want to see the culture shock that Joss had in Germany, click here. If you want to see our proposal video, click here. And we'll see you next week. Adios, muchachos. Cheers.